<laughs> so there's that. I would I would show you how we have to this <laughs> So, just run yeah, so this is a turbo lamp stack if you're a PHP guy. It's just under turbo lamp, just Google for turbo lamp. And then when you fire it up, it just gives you a blank page. I don't have a sample app to plop in there. You're at five minutes, George. Five minutes left? Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Um, you didn't have anything present? Yeah, we were worried. <laughs> Two hours, oh my god. Let me show you the code because this is actually the really important. Um, charms are nothing special. Well, they are special. But what they really are is just a bunch of code to execute depending on what you're doing in your environment. So in this case, uh, that's a simple, simple. So these are the things that execute when you break that relation between a master and a slave, for example. So what happens is each one of these hooks over here, including the installation hook, this is the bit that runs right as soon as we get the instance, executes depending on what you're doing in your live environment. So in this case, if you look at all the things that um, MariaDB connects to, in this case we have one that's Nagios, right? When you take a box that has Nagios and you would, oh, I should have connected Nagios to it. Uh, Nagios to MySQL, um, all the things that MySQL needs to do in order to report to Nagios executes on the MySQL. MariaDB. <laughs> executes on the MariaDB box. And all the things Nagios needs to monitor uh, MariaDB happens there, including my favorite one. I don't know how maybe you've deployed an open source version of something at work, and then something breaks, and then you call somebody, and then they say, that's really awesome, but you don't buy support from us. And then you say, oh, okay, that's not a problem. I am in such deep shit. I have no, pr I have no problem paying you money. And then what do they say? They're like, well, you have to deploy the enterprise version of this instead. And you're like, well, that doesn't really help me either. Um, so what the MariaDB guys really do, and this is really awesome, that's why I want to show it to you, is you can actually mail them, pay them money, they'll give you a key, you tell Juju what the key is, and it upgrades your entire living deployment to, an to the enterprise supported model, right? So you can break stuff, then upgrade it, and be like, call it, help me out, and have some money. Um, so I really, I really wanted to show that because that's... And to be fair, actually, the MariaDB is exactly the same. Yeah. It's just right. that you get access to a support portal and a human being. It's right. Exactly. Uh, the same MariaDB server. That's a good thing. Yes, that is a good thing. That is a good thing. So, um, mm -hmm. so if you do want to check it out, let, let me just talk to you guys for features. Sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't cognizant of time here. Is the Maria guys have ex exposed a bunch of config options for you to play with, right? So consider these the knobs in your database. What's really great is they've given you a very reasonable set of defaults for most people. Um, one of the horrible things I hate about traditional packaging is you install it and then it's, well, of course, it's not going to scale out of the box. You have to go and like, figure all that out yourself. Since now they have a direct method of giving you their software, they can kind of say, you know what, most people do this. Let's set this the same default. Um, so you can tweak them there, switch your storage engine. Um, actually, if you scroll down all the way down, here are all the different things that you can do. Like if you have a Ceph backend connected to this, you can do all sorts of craziness. How many of you guys are using Ceph at all? You should, it's pretty great. What is Ceph? Uh, uh, Ceph is a re replicating uh, file system, cluster file system. What are you saying about change the storage engine? Blocks. Yeah, so the whole storage engine. Right. Yeah, you know, DB, yeah. InnoDB is the default, but yes. we also give you TalkyDB in case you want that for better insert speed, long-term compression. So in here you can change ports if you want, uh, different interfaces. A bunch of these are kind of open stackish. Uh, the things that you might want to change, like when you're connected to an open stack stack network is very important. Um, one of my favorites here are uh, the tuning level. Um, what they do is they kind of give you Right, so they basically give you three settings. It's like safest, that means I really care about my data fast, which is really good, and unsafe, which is things for data you might not care about, but you really care about speed, like, uh, I don't know, when, when would you use that? Images? Or log. Log, 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 log yeah. yeah. Is group list for cache? Or yeah. Or if you're just passing stuff through and it's not going right. to be like, right. right. Or if you have a black hole kind of instance where you're trying to, you know, fake 76. Right. Right. And they also live with your really casting where mm -hmm. you spit it out. Just like live eat my data. Right. Great. Uh, so this is good because Basically, having, having messed with databases, like, like, you know, when you, we 
you go to a talk like his his talk last hour, right? What you really want is for him to come to your work and be like, look at your database and like, do do this 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 and this. And right? This lets them ship it that way to you, which I think is really really powerful. Um, so with that, I'm out of time. I'm going to give you the URL to go to. So the, this code here, everything I've shown you here today is 100% free software, um, just like Maria. Just go to jujucharms.com slash MariaDB. Um, all this code is available for you to branch, including the master and the slave. It's, it's kind of the same code, depending on what config um, you give it. You can run this on 1404, power 8. I should ensure that it goes work on ARM. Sorry that I do not know that. And then with that, do we have any questions? Or? The only people that build ARM are Debian, Ubuntu, and um, you're Fedora. Kind of playing ARM every day. <laughs> <laughs> it, this looks more interesting than the tractors that I play. We ported um, GCC, or not GCC, GGO, oh, so yeah. GCGO uh, to ARM. Here, do you want so we could run. This one's way good. So we've done some series on ARM. Okay. Um, Actually, I love the platform. But I, 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 I do the same support out there for it. No, th that's actually generated on the cloud. That's dynamic. And coming soon is the charm that we released that allows you to load up Galera clusters. So this is master slave async replication. We want you to have fully sync replication as well. So here, here I had to configure a master and a slave with Galera. Is it Galera? Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Galera will be fully sync. Well, I'm totally messing up naming here. Is you just add unit and you don't really say a master slave, right? Yeah, you just say I want three units and they'll all be the same. Now, do you do they always have to be odd number or is there like leader uh, yeah, it, leader it, election it, and whatnot? Yeah, it has to be odd because of quorum selection in case one actually dies. Right. Okay. S same same with us. You have to have like an odd number of states or something. Um, it's a fun part. Yeah. So with that, I, I hope you dig this. I. Um, you don't need a lot to get started. Like I said, I only started mess. I practiced for this for about two hours yesterday, mostly making sure everything deployed, and then I started digging around in the database. So, if you're going to go get a MariaDB book or something, and you want to get up and running fast and getting to the good meat, like the nice features, instead of messing around with, you know, trying to find packages and, and installing and things like that, then this is a this is a good way to go. We default to M1 Smalls or M3. Whatever the whatever the smallest cheapest thing on Amazon is that isn't a micro because that that will screw you. Um, so actually doing all this is not as expensive as you, as, as you think, especially if you want to learn with multiple machines, right? Now you can if you have a powerful machine at home that's not a laptop, if you have like a nice i7 with maybe SSD disk, you can certainly deploy all of this that I showed you in containers locally, and that will be fast and good. Um, if you're doing add unit minus ten or something though, you yeah. have. 10 OS is launching, even in containers, all doing app get upgrade at the same time. That will be slow. If you haven't had Power 8 hardware, it will be really fast. Yeah. Um, but so, also the cost a lot. George mentions that uh, all of this runs on Azure, and we have an Azure presentation starting in about five minutes. Is, is the person here?